Hello and welcome to this video clip where we're going to write a Python function to work out if a year is a leap year or not. Now, how do we know if a year is a leap year? Well, there are a few set of rules for this. First of all, we can assume that if a year can be divided by four, then it's more likely going to be a leap year. However, there are a few exceptions to this. Effectively, if the year can be divided by 4, but can also be divided by 100, then it is not a leap year. Unless it can also be divided by 400, and in that case, it would be a leap year. So for instance, 2020 can be divided by 4, but not by 100, it is still a leap year. 2100 is not a leap year, because though it can be divided by 4, it can also be divided by 100. And then 2400 is a leap year because it can be divided by 4, it can also be divided by 100, but it can also be divided by 400, and that makes it a leap year. So we're going to write a function based on this. Now, we've got a flowchart here that will help us go through this algorithm. Our job is going to implement this flowchart in Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this into a new window and I'm going to do a split screen so we can refer to the flowchart while we're typing the code in the trinket window that up here at the bottom. Here we go. So if we look at the flowchart here, the first thing that we have to do is create a function called isLeapYear that will take one parameter, the year itself. So in Python, to create a function, I'm going to use the word def. I'm going to give my function a name is leap year and it takes one parameter the year. The next step is to implement a few if statements and the first one works out if the year can be divided by four. Now if a year can be divided by four then its remainder of dividing the year by four should be null. So we're going to work out the remainder of dividing the year by four and in Python the mod operator or the remainder is the percentage sign. Now if the remainder is null, then we can work out if it's a leap year or not. However, if the year cannot be divided by 4, then we know it's not a leap year. So I'm going to use an else statement here and I'm going to return false. Now if the year can be divided by 4, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is a leap year. We now need to work out if the year can be divided by 100. So I'm going to use the same approach here, but this if statement is within the first if statement. We call that nested if statements. And how do we do this in Python? We do this by indenting our code even further. So I'm going to put my next if statement here. If the year can be divided by 100, which means the remainder of dividing year by 100 is zero. Now, if that's the case, we will have to do some more code, but if it's not the case, then we know that this year is a leap year. So I'm going to return true. Finally, if it can be divided by four and by 100, we can still work out whether it can also be divided by 400. And that is a further level of nesting. So I'm going to indent my code even further and I'm going to write my last if statement. If the year can be divided by 400, so the remainder of dividing by 400 is null. In that case, I'm going to return true. Otherwise, I'm going to return false. Now what I've been doing here is this last if statement here. Okay, so we can see the three if statements, they are nested if statement, and you can see that the level of indentation used to implement this level of nesting. Now everything needs to be fairly aligned, so be very careful with your indentation here. Perfect. Now if I run this code here, nothing will happen, because at this stage all I've done is created a function. I now need to write an algorithm to test my function. Now to do so I'm going to use the second flowchart that you can now see on your screen. So the first thing my new algorithm is now asking me to do is to retrieve a user input to ask the user to enter the year. So I'm going to use an input statement. Please 
and uh, year using four digit format. For instance, 2020. Now, because this input is going to retrieve a number, an integer value, I'm going to cast this input into an integer using the int. Then I'm going to use my function is leap year to work out if the year entered by the user is actually a leap year or not. So I'm going to use an if statement. If is leap year and I'm going to pass as a parameter the year that I've just retrieved from the end user. Now if that's the case I'm going to output a message print I'm going to write down the year now because the year is an integer I need to cast it back to a string plus is a leap year And I'm going to display another message to say that what actually does it mean to be a leap year? It means it contains 366 days. If not, so I'm going to use an else, I'm going to output a message as well to say that it is not a leap year. So it's going to be very similar to the one above cast the year, concatenate it with a piece of text is not a leap year. And I'm going to explain what this means. It contains 365 days. Perfect. So I should be able to test this code now. I'm going to run my code. Please enter your bit in four digit format. So I'm going to try with 2020. And it tells me that 2020 is a leap year and it contains 366 days. I'm going to try a different one. 2021 is not a leap year and contains 365 days. Perfect. Now there are a few more. Um, test that we need to perform to check that every rule is working fine and to do so what I would like you to do is scroll down to the test plan so all you have to do with this test plan is input the value into your program and see whether you get the same output as the expected output if that's the case we've just done this one here so we can see that this worked uh, we've also done this one here so we know this one works you've got three more tests to perform and then this challenge will be complete. Well, thanks for watching. It's now your turn to implement this function with an algorithm to test it and to then complete the test plan. Good luck and bye for now.